Hi, for this video what I want to do is discuss how do we find the mean and standard error of a sampling distribution using the central limit theorem. In this situation what we have is the braking distance of a car or normally distributed with a mean of 136 feet and a standard deviation of 4.66 feet. Random samples of size 16 are taken from this population, find the mean and standard error um, in some text, it may say find the standard error, or it may say find the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means. And I know that a lot of this is the wording. The wording sounds confusing, but um, when it's all broken down, the central limit theorem is actually a very simple property. Um, there are a couple of things that you have to keep in mind in order to use it. The first thing for the central limit theorem, and I'm just going to abbreviate it as CLT for the central limit theorem, remember that in order for this to kick in, you either have to have a sample size that is greater than or equal to 30, or it has to come from a normally distributed population. Okay, so let's look through and see if this is met in this particular problem. So if we read through, it tells us that we have a sample of size 16. So if this was not a normally distributed population that this one says that it is, um, you could not use the central limit theorem. It wouldn't necessarily kick in and it's, um, you're not going to end up necessarily with a normal distribution with this small of a sample size. But because it comes from a normally distributed population, size 16 is okay. So n equals 16 is okay since normally distributed. Okay, like I said, if you do not, if you start with um, something that is not normally distributed, you absolutely cannot use the central limit theorem. If you recall, the central limit theorem tells us that our distribution of the sample means, so if I were to take all of the means of this size and I were to make a distribution of it, that it is going to approach the normal model. With a mean, and that's the mu sub x bar, this is just the mean of the sampling distribution, that's what this stands for, is going to approach the mean of the population. So when it asks you to find the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean, as long as the central limit theorem does kick in, remember that the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean is equal to the mean of the population. So we would just go through and read this and see that that is mu. So we can say that the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample means is 136 feet. If it asks you to find the standard error or the standard deviation of the sample mean, remember that the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample mean or the standard error is equal to the population standard deviation divided by the square root of n. Okay, so what we would do is we would go back up to our problem and we would find that information. So in this case, it's asking for the standard error. So we would look for the standard deviation. And we see that the standard deviation is 4.66 feet. So this would be our sigma. So if we come back down here and we plug in the 4.66, and we would divide it by the square root of 16. So we would just simply plug this into our calculator, and we would see uh, that we end up with 1.165 feet as our standard error. So what this is telling us that on average, each of our sample means is going to differ from the population mean by approximately 1.165 feet on average. So if we were to look at these two distributions side by side, the original distribution would go out by 4.66 feet in each direction both to the right and to the left from the mean where the sampling distribution of the sample means would only go out by 1.165 feet so what it does is it narrows it out 
Um, if I were to increase the sample size just so that you could see what happens, I know that this was not listed in the problem, um, but just to give you um, or to show you what happens to the sampling distribution of the sample or to the standard error of the sampling distribution of the sample mean. If our sample size was increased to, let's say, um, 100, and this would work for any population, so even if it didn't say normally distributed, we could use this sample size for any population. The mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean is not going to change. It does not change. It's going to stay at 136 feet. That is going to remain constant. But if we look at the standard error, When we increase the sample size to 100, the square root of 100 is 10. So if I divided this by 10, it would be 0.466 feet. So you can see that the error decreases as the sample size increases. So you're less likely to have um, as much deviation between all of the sample means from the mean um, as you do with a smaller sample size. So just a recap, in order for the central limit theorem to kick in, you either have to have a normally distributed population or your sample size has to be greater than or equal to 30. And if those conditions are met, then the mean of the sampling distribution of the sample mean is equal to the mean of the population. And the standard error, or also known as the standard deviation of the sampling distribution of the sample means, is going to equal the population standard deviation divided by the square root of the sample size. That's what the n represents. And remember, as the sample size increases, your standard error will decrease. As always, thanks for watching. Please make sure to check out all of my other videos.